And people wondering why there's no trust left. Well, because of the treatment of this woman. Who would you trust? Would you trust the Crown prosecutors again? Would you trust the police? Would you trust the justice of the peace? Would you trust politicians? Would you trust the media? None of them are worthy of your trust. Well, and that's why the convoy formed in the first place. It's because all the institutions failed. The police failed. The courts failed. The doctors failed. The politicians failed. Uh, people's employers were forcing them into vaccine mandates. Everything failed. And so the truckers decided they were going to sort this out for themselves. And it continues. You know, it, it continues until today. Now, finally, a judge, somebody trained in law, looked at this and said, settle down. These are minor charges. She's not a danger to anybody. And basically, I don't care about your feelings. Yeah. She gets to go free. Yeah. Excuse me. Hey there. Sorry, I'm interrupting myself, actually. But I want to tell you what this is. This is a free version of the Ezra Levant Show. Now, normally it's behind a paywall and you have to become a subscriber to what we call Rebel News Plus to see it. But once a week, we take a show from behind the paywall and put it up so you can see what you're missing. Now, I hope you enjoy this show enough to become a subscriber, go to rebelnewsplus.com. Eight bucks a month, which is about half the price of Netflix. You get my show every weekday, plus four other weekly shows from other rebels. Enjoy the show. And if you like it a lot, why not subscribe? Okay, back to the show. Today was an enormous day. Tamara Leach, the Métis grandma, who peacefully helped organize the trucker convoy in January and February. Well, as you know, she was seized under a national warrant, the kind of thing reserved for, I don't know, murderers on the loose. She was seized, brought from Medicine Hat, where she lives, to Ottawa, a journey that takes a number of hours, but they managed to stretch it out into a week. Uh, she was put before a justice of the peace, not a judge, not even a lawyer, just some guy, who um, kept her in prison. And it was only today that a real judge heard the matter again from scratch and said, no, the woman can go free. And it was a good day for freedom. It feels like a little bit of an echo of Arthur Pavlovsky's good day for freedom last week. Unfortunately, both Arthur Pavlovsky and Tamara Leach had to serve weeks in prison before they got the good news. But Sheila Gunn-Reed was covering the entire trial today via remote, via video feed. I really recommend you read her Twitter stream. We've also collected them in a written article on Rebel News. And Sheila joins me now via Skype from her headquarters in Edmonton. Sheila, great to see you again. I really enjoyed your Twitter feed today. I was riveted by it. I couldn't refresh. Click, click, click. I was waiting for the <laughs> uh, updates. And obviously, I wasn't alone uh, it looked like tens of thousands of people were following along in real time. Maybe, maybe even more than that. I've just, I've never seen such Twitter engagement on your feed, bef feed before. I think people were riveted. I think so too. I think, um, you know, for the lay person to tune into court, it can be a little bit difficult. And it even is for me, and I do court reporting all the time to sort of weave through the legal language. But what we saw in court today was an actual judge making an actual ruling on the actual evidence before him. And this judge just ripped apart the assessment of the prior justice of the peace, a, a non-lawyer who had ordered Tamara Le Leach's bail revoked and sent her back to jail at the end of June. Today, she was, it marked 49 days of incarceration for her on minor mischief charges, minor stuff that as a 49-year-old person with a non criminal background, she would likely not even spend a day in jail for what she's yeah. done, but she's approaching 49 days in jail. And the last thing I heard that judge say today was, Madam Constable, take off those shackles. Yeah. You know, uh, it's been a while since I practiced criminal law. I haven't practiced any law in over a decade. But when I was a law student, uh, one of the things young kids do is they take the most minor cases in court to sort of practice being a baby lawyer. It was It's good education. And uh, so we had shoplifting cases. We had the most minor, you know, a mischief charge, a vandalism charge. And you very quickly learn that if it's generally a good person who hasn't done something wrong, not only will they get no jail time, not only will they get no fine, 
they'll most likely not even get a criminal record. It'll be dispatched with a discharge, a conditional discharge. That is, they have to do a few conditions, some public service, or even what's called an absolute discharge. That's basically, a, in golf, they'd call them mulligan. It's the judge saying, look, I don't know what you were thinking. You're a good person. Do not go down this road. This way, way lies bad news for you. I am going to give you a second chance. Fly straight. And basically, all, every case we had was of the gravity of Tamara Leach's case. Oh, inciting mischief. Well, don't do that again. Young lady, I don't want to see you in this court again. Instead, 49 days in prison, 49 days of hard time. You know, you get day parole in Canada. If my math is right after one-sixth of your sentence. So 50 days, that's, that's like a one-year prison sentence, a one-year prison term for inciting mischief. And of course, she hasn't even been tried or convicted yet. What a disgrace. What an absolute disgrace, not on her, but on the prosecutor, on the police, on the police who ordered the national warrant, on the medicine hat police for co complying, on the fake judge justice of the peace, and on this disgraceful prosecutor who our friends at Truth North revealed has donated $17,000 to Trudeau and who clearly was auditioning for a judicial appointment by Trudeau. Disgraces all around, other than today's judge, seem to set things right. Yeah, today's judge actually uh, took the prior justice of the peace to task. He basically said the justice of the, of the peace erred in taking everything the Crown said. He used the words as gospel. Yeah. Uh, he didn't even bother to drill down. He didn't bother to examine so that when the Crown said, oh, somebody facing Tamara Leach's charges could face, if convicted, a maximum of 10 years in prison. Maybe, but that's not what, in reality, that is not what people with no criminal record after 49 years on the face of the earth, that's not what they face on minor criminal convictions like this. The only thing, the judge looked and he said, I looked because the other, ju the justice of the peace didn't. The only time you could ever find somebody even remotely in line with this was a, a case called uh, Dubai, and that person basically ground through mischief the entire Quebec electrical system to a halt, causing catastrophe. That person got jail time. Tamara Leach would never see time behind bars. He said if she were convicted of everything, she would, at the maximum, get time served right now. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you were there covering it. Um, it's funny because when Arthur Pavlovsky was charged and convicted and when he was losing, the mainstream media loved it and they demonized it and they wrote about it. But when he won, I saw the tiniest little mentions in the mainstream media. And Tamara Leach was demonized. It's hard to demonize a Métis grandma from Medicine Hat, but they did their best. And today on her victory day, it's quite something to watch the mainstream media who really were a torch-bearing mob coming to, to, uh, to get her. It was the media that was the mob, not the truckers. It's the media that were baying for blood. And you know what? The worst media in the country, the Ottawa Pampered Press Gallery. Oh, they're the worst. And uh, I'm just so glad that you were there covering it to provide the other side of the story. Never believe a word the CBC says. Never believe a word that the mainstream newspapers say. You just can't. They lied to you about the trucker rebellion in the first place. Do you really think they would tell you the truth about the trial? You know, there are a lot of times during this uh, hearing today and yesterday where the judge basically had to remind the Crown, and I suppose by extension the mainstream media, who also, like the Justice of the Peace before this judge, repeat everything the Crown says without any sort of skepticism, had to remind them that she is not charged with sedition. She's not charged with inciting a riot. She's not charged with rioting. She's charged with very yeah. minor things under the law. And basically the judge had to remind the Crown several times today and yeah. yesterday, settle down, quit yeah. acting like a drama queen. This is yeah. very minor stuff. You should not be asking to hold this woman up until her trial date, which is not set, it could be two years out, to hold her until her trial date on causing really what amounts to an extended traffic snarl yeah. in the nation's capital. Yeah. 
Well, uh, it's quite something. All the things we were told to respect. We were told to respect the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Until Arthur Pavlovsky's ruling last week, that Charter of Rights and Freedoms was about as, um, well, it was completely useless to, to come to it. It hasn't rolled back a single lockdown measure at all. We were told to respect the independence of the prosecution. Oh, so you take the top liberal donor in Ottawa and you let him run rampant against a Métis grandma. We're told to respect the courts. So you throw a, a non-judge, non-lawyer, justice of the peace who has no idea what the hell he's doing, and he throws someone in prison for two months. Yep. All the things, we, you, the Ottawa police, the most disgraceful police in the country under their thuggish chief, all the things we were told to respect and look up to, every one of them is ashes. And, uh, and people wondering why there's no trust left. Well, because of the treatment of this woman. Who would you trust? Would you trust the Crown prosecutors again? Would you trust the police? Would you trust the justice of the peace? Would you trust politicians? Would you trust the media? None of them are worthy of your trust. Well, and that's why the convoy formed in the first place. It's because all the institutions failed. The police failed. The courts failed. The doctors failed. The politicians failed. Uh, people's employers were forcing them into vaccine mandates. Everything failed. And so the truckers decided they were going to sort this out for themselves. And it continues. You know, it, it continues until today. Now, finally, a judge, somebody trained in law, looked at this and said, settle down. These are minor charges. She's not a danger to anybody. And basically, I don't care about your feelings. Yeah. She gets to go free. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you were in there. And so many people followed your live tweeting, and we compiled them on the website. For folks who uh, want to read it, go to rebelnews.com. It's on the website. Or go to Sheila's Twitter feed, which is also a fun way to read it as in chronological order. Great to see you, my friend. Thanks for doing such good reportage. You really are telling the other side of the story. Thanks, boss. All right, there you have it, Sheila gunn Reed. We don't call her our chief reporter for nothing. Stay with us. Uh, your words to me next. What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday, I do a monologue. Usually, it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest, and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau. But the good news is it's only 8 bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix. And in addition to my weekly, sorry, my nightly show, you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News. So you're getting 36 shows a month just for 8 bucks. I think it's worth it. And even if you're not quite sure, do it anyways, because... We rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent. I promise you I'll never take a dime from Trudeau. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe. Thanks.